Chapter 16 Dawn flipped herself over, crab scooting backward as she heard footsteps coming. She glanced over her shoulder, but the other kids were long gone, their shouts fading as they ran away. Dawn's heart pounded with terror as she stared up at the zombie woman. All those movies she'd seen back in the normal world flashed through her mind. What would the zombie woman do to her? To her surprise, the zombie woman stopped and peered down at Dawn. She waved her hands around and grunted. What? She said. We. Oui. Dawn blinked sitting up. Was the woman trying to speak? Dawn wasn't sure. But she definitely didn't seem to be trying to eat Dawn's brains. Um, what? Dawn asked uncertainly. R, are you trying to say something? The woman gurgled, then tried again. It seemed to take vast effort to push the sounds out of her mouth. Dawn listened carefully. Neat. She guessed. Are you saying neat? Are you hungry? The woman shook her head and waved her hands, looking angry for a moment. She took a step closer, and Dawn scooted back a little farther. Okay, okay, not neat. I get it. She waited for the zombie woman to try again. Leap. She guessed next. Um, Reef. She bit her lip. It was impossible to tell what the woman was trying to say. The zombie woman took another step. Dawn's muscles tensed ready to jump up and run. Then the woman flung something at her. It was a handful of leaves. They fluttered down onto Dawn's stomach. Oh, Dawn said. Leaf. Are you saying leaf? She grabbed the rumpled leaves and held them up. The zombie woman grunted with excitement, clapping her hands. She pointed at herself, then at the leaves. Dawn tilted her head, trying to figure out what the zombie was trying to say. The woman leaned closer, and something that was tangled in her long thicket of dark hair sparkled in the moonlight. Dawn squinted at it in surprise. Could that be? Hey, anybody here? A voice shouted. The zombie woman grunted in surprise then turned and ran. Wait. Dawn called, jumping to her feet. Come back. She started after her. But the zombie had disappeared into the darkness. Dawn wasn't sure which way she'd gone. A moment later, several people burst into view from the other direction. Jake and Jane were in the lead, with several Vespertine police officers following. Don pointed the police after the East Valley teens. The officers took off immediately, leaving Don alone with the twins. Are you okay? Jake asked breathlessly. We came as fast as we could. Jane shot an annoyed look after the departing police. Yeah, it would have been faster except at first the stupid cops got we were the ones trying to pull a prank. Don waved away their questions and explanations. Listen, this might sound like a weird thing to ask right now, but what did your mother look like? She took a deep breath. And are you absolutely sure she's um really dead? Jane stared at her. What? Why are you asking us that? Jake's face had gone pale in the moonlight. Because I just ran into this zombie woman that's what scared the East Valley kids away. Dawn reached out and touched the charm Jane was wearing around her neck. She was wearing an earring that looked just like this one. Jane gasped. What? Just then voices rang out nearby, calling all three of their names. Uh-oh, Jake muttered. He glanced at Dawn. Mrs. Tompkins called your parents and our dad. We begged her not to but. That's okay. Dawn bit her lip as she heard her mother's voice. She didn't sound happy. I guess they would have found out anyway. Dawn. Her father stomped into view. He was wearing rumpled pajama pants with rubber boots and a jacket. There you are. You have some explaining to do young lady. 
I know, Don said. But wait, I wasn't done explaining to the twins minus. It'll have to wait. Her mother sounded even angrier than her father. We're going home right now. We'll be having a long discussion about this when we get there. So your parents weren't mad. Luna kicked at the ground sending the swing higher. Dawn slumped lazily on the swing next to her. Oh, they were definitely mad at first, she said. Actually, they pretty much freaked out when Mrs. Tompkins called. But after we got home, we had a long talk about, you know, everything. Luna nodded sympathetically. Yeah. Dawn smiled at her, suddenly feeling lucky to have such a cool cousin. Luna had come over first thing Saturday morning to find out what had happened. Apparently, the whole town was talking about it. So what about the twins? Luna asked. Is that woman from the woods really their mother? I don't know. Dawn was wondering that herself. I wanted to go over there right after breakfast, but my parents said it was way too early. They said I had to wait until at least 9 a.m. Luna stopped her swing, grabbed Dawn's wrist, and checked her watch. Her zombie fingers felt cool and a little slimy, but Dawn barely noticed. It's five after nine now, Luna said with a smile. You're right. Dawn stood up. Do you mind? Go ahead. Luna started swinging again. But I want to hear everything later, okay? Promise. Dawn hurried over to the twins' house. Mr. Donovan answered the door. He smiled when he saw Dawn. Ah, uh, here's our favorite neighbor. He said cheerfully, waving her inside. The twins have been bugging me to let them call you with the news, but I insisted they had to wait until at least 9 a.m. to make sure you're not asleep. After all, you were out late last night. He winked. Don just stared at him. He seemed so different. The sad, faraway look in his eyes was gone. Even his clothes looked different brighter and cleaner. Or maybe they just seemed that way because he was standing up straight and smiling for a change. Then Jane burst into the room. She rushed over and gave Don a hug. You were right, it was her. She exclaimed. Mom's back. 